All right, folks, this week we are joined by Mr. Shot IQ himself, Joel Turner, and we are talking about the mental side of archery. You're not going to want to miss this one, so stay tuned. All right, so before we bring Joel in and start talking about the mental side of archery, I just want to set the stage a little bit. So throughout this series that I've been doing where I'm breaking down my traditional archery shot cycle, I have focused exclusively on the physical aspects of archery. Bow hand position, string hand, good form, alignment, and all of that stuff. That is how you set the shot up. But then, once you have everything lined up, you're on target, you're aimed, then comes this other job of actually letting that arrow go without messing it up. And that part, releasing the arrow without messing it up, that is the part that gives so many people trouble. And that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. Joel and I are gonna be talking a lot about something called target panic. Now, if you don't have target panic or you think that you don't have target panic, watch this video all the way through because I can almost guarantee that this video or the stuff that we're gonna talk about in this video will help you to become a better shot. I know from firsthand experience that it can make a world of difference in your shooting if you'll give it a try. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to Joel's website down below in the video description. Now, while you're down there poking around, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And without further ado, Mr. Joel Turner. All right, Joel, tell me, what is target panic and why is it so important? Target panic is just simply, the human mind has a major problem with shooting. So when you're trying to shoot a bow, there's, you are holding back a string, you're holding that bow apart and there's gonna be a sudden release of energy. And your mind wants to know exactly when that's gonna happen so that it can brace you. If somebody has target panic, and everybody has target panic. I mean, it's just a human mind thing. It's not an individual thing. It's not a disease that you get. It's how we learn to do movements, right? Especially movements that are gonna cause our body impact. So we have a natural reaction to those, to a sudden release of energy, be that an explosion in a firearm or the sudden release of a bow. So you mentioned that every, you think everybody has target panic to some extent. How does that, First of all, explain that, and then how does that manifest itself in different people? It's, you know, you'll have people like I was when I was eight years old, I would lock three feet below a target. And then when my mind was ready for that explosion, it would jump to target and release the string all at the same time. Or you might see it in a snapshot, right? Where somebody's drawing their bow back and they get to about right here, and then it's like the bow becomes a thousand pounds because their mind wants to know exactly when it's gonna let go. So it, but it knows it also wants to get toward the face. And they've decided to let go. Right, yeah. and they just, so they give it a big old yank and let it go at the same time. Yeah. So these are all pre-ignition movements that get linked to the release motor program. That's the science of it. Yeah, I, so when you're on a, a, a shooting line at a 3D tournament and you're, you're just shooting the bales, you can look at, around at different people and see all of these different things oh, occurring. Absolutely. Right. Uh, for myself, personally, this is something I've struggled with forever. Mm -hmm. But it's never been, you know, I've, I've, I've never been like locking off target or jumping to target or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The thing or how it's manifest in me is when I come back to full draw and I get, you know, aimed and everything, I just collapse, just boom, you know, do that. Mm -hmm. And of course, inputs into the shot, that's what throws right. everything off. And it right. doesn't matter what kind of input it is. Mm -hmm just that there are inputs in the shot. One of the things that I like to say, and I've said before in this little video series that I'm doing on shooting is, if you have good form, good alignment, and all of that stuff, if you set your shot up right, the bow will do its job if you allow it to do its job. Right. But we don't allow it to do it right. because of this thing we've got going on in our head. Right, so you know that collapse you have, that's, that was your pre-ignition movement. It tries to bring your body in to protect you, right? Yes. Anytime loud noises, explosions, we always collapse inward, right? We don't collapse outward, so we collapse inward. So that's what the body wants to do. And it's just, I mean, everybody deals with it. That's really what target panic is, sure. is you anticipating that shot and introducing variables into that shot that don't need to be there. Right, what form does, what good form does and a good holding position does 
is it limits the range of motion for pre-ignition movements. Like if you are able to get to that good alignment, that good holding position, even if you collapse slightly, it's the range of motion has been minimized. So it's not gonna deviate your point of impact as much as a person that was massively out of alignment and having a major collapse. Then their pre-ignition movements got much more range of motion. So form is important to minimize range of motion. Now, when we're talking about getting out of target panic, we're talking about how do you use your mind? How do you really concentrate on movement so that you can eliminate completely pre-ignition movements? Because if you have that true surprise release, your body doesn't know when to put pre-ignition movements in. Therefore, they're non-existent. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we know what target panic is and some of the ways that it can manifest in different people, how do we, how do we master this thing? So mastering target panic is basically mastering your mind, figuring out what decisions you need to make in a shot, when specifically you need to make them, and then scientifically how to carry them out. So when you first learned to shoot a bow, you learned all the physicality of it, right? You learned how to grip the bow. Yep. And you learned how to, how to grip the string, and you learned how to raise the bow, and how to draw back, and how to get in alignment, all those things, right? All the things that are easy to teach. Right. But the problem is with the, the human learning model is we start out very step by step, very cognitive, right? And everything was very choppy to start with. And you had steps that you followed. Mm -hmm. And the goal of your practice then became how do we start to blend these steps, right? And once the steps get blended, the subconscious is then allowed to tell itself when to release. And it starts to shortcut it because the ultimate goal of the human mind is efficiency not accuracy, mm -hmm. right? So it starts to, as soon as you get aimed, you let the string go, yep. right? And then that gets faster and faster. And then you don't quite get to your anchor and you let it go. Or maybe you get to anchor, but you don't quite get the tip where you need it and you let it go. And that just, your mind loves you for it because it's now- Because you don't have to deal with it right, anymore. It's now bracing you for the recoil, yep. right? You've got all those little pre-ignition movements in there. And that's the way people travel for the rest of their lives, right? But when we step back and we look at how did you start, right? You started with very cognitive steps, right? And those steps, people jump right over the most important things, which is what I call the fundamentals of shooting. You learned all the fun to physicals, right? So that's a <laughs> word that I made up, but it's true. You learned all the physicality of shooting yep. without the mentality of it, mm -hmm. without all the mental processes that are behind those movements. So. What I call the fundamentals starts with determination. And a lot of people will get years into their shooting career before they get pissed off enough to go, there's got to be a different way of doing this because they're not getting better results. They may have been shooting for 40 years and they haven't gotten better for 39 of those years. They've right? plateaued. They've plateaued for decades, yes. right? Yep. So until they get mad enough to go, I'm going to do it a different way, right? It's that determination that starts it all, right? So determination is the first fundamental. Determination then leads to decisions. That's that when you step up, when I see you shoot, I see there's a pause, right? There's a pause. And in that pause, I believe that you're making decisions. You're making a decision to do it a specific way, no matter what, right? And it's what I call the original decision. I'm gonna shoot this shot with control no matter what. I mean, you think about your listeners out there, how many of those listeners are out there creating just a moment of pause before they draw their bow back? Or do they just step up there and just draw their bow back and hope they do good, right? If you do that, you've already handed the shot to autopilot, yeah. right? And the subconscious is gonna take it. I feel like that's 90 plus percent of people that, Absolutely. that you see shooting. Absolutely. And I, I've, I, We'll tell the story about how you and I met here in a little while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in a little right. while, but I'm glad that we met because, yeah. um, you know, when when for years I shot that way. I mean, I would go up and I would I would look at the target and I would focus on the target. I would do all the things that that people told me that mm -hmm. I needed to do, and I would do all those things, and I would never reach the level of accuracy that I knew that I was capable of reaching, mm -hmm. and that was frustrating for me. You were only as good as your pre-ignition movements allowed you to be. That's a good way to put it, right? yeah. That's, that's, that's your plateau. 
and you don't know what pre-ignition movements are coming because you have no control of them. They're coming from your central nervous system. You don't know if this time you're going to grab your bow, if you're going to blink your eyes, if you're going to collapse. You don't know what's coming, yeah. and that's a horrible place to be, right? So this determination to finally step onto the path of shot control leads to decisions. The original decision, I'm going to shoot this shot with control no matter what. Mm -hmm. But that original decision won't carry you all the way through a shot. It'll start you into the process, but it won't carry you all the way through. The second decision I have people make is at half draw, right? At half draw, say something to yourself. I don't care what you say, say something to yourself as you draw your bow back. I like to say, I'm gonna do this right. What that does is it brings you, these decisions bring you into the third fundamental, which is presence. When you make a decision, it makes you intensely present over the next task, right? Job number one in our shot is to draw back and aim. Get it done, right? Don't be moving into the target. If you know your gap, you know what it looks like, draw back and aim, get it done, and then just watch it to keep it. That's the only control you have over your aim is just watching it, right? So these things, this is all of the things that I've covered in this series, in this where I've broken down my shot cycle. This, these are all the things that I've covered until this point. Okay. Now. This is where Joel's telling us how to actually do right, things right, right without messing it up. Right, right. So you've got this second decision that I call the half draw moment. So as you draw your bow back, make another decision to keep yourself in the present of the shot process, right? And so now you've got, now you're present, you've got your anchor, you've got your aim, everything's good. What you have to realize is this is where autopilot really tries to take over. This is where most people's shot breaks down because it makes total sense for you to, when you are aimed, to shoot the arrow. It makes total intuitive sense, right? But we have to use that moment when you understand that the aim is perfect or as good as it's going to get. It's not time to shoot. It's time for another decision, right? Because you have a whole other job to do in your shot. So draw back and aim, get it done, watch it to keep it. Once the aim is complete, again, it's time for another decision. And I found this while I was at full draw on a hog back in 2008. And I, I had to become more present in my shot process. And I remember saying to myself, I'm, I'm aimed and it's, it's perfect. I mean, the arrow is going behind the shoulder of that hog. All I really have to do is let it go, but I needed to be more present in this second job because at the time I was shooting a clicker and I knew I needed to get through that clicker. I, it was just, I was pissed off enough in that shot that I needed to get through that clicker because I'd missed so many shots on that hunt prior. So I said to myself, as I'm at full draw, before I started my movement through my clicker, I said, here I go. And just by saying, here I go, it brought me into the present enough to get through that second job. The second job is, total concentration on the movement that gets the bow to fire, gets you through your mechanoreceptive trigger, whatever it may be. It's a whole other job. No matter what that job is, it's separate from the aim. You can't ever let the aim be the stimulus for your shot. And that is what triggers 90 plus right. percent of people to that shoot. That is where people, because it makes sense, right? Yeah. I'm aimed, why wouldn't I just shoot? Okay, so on that shot, there was very minute pause between aimed mm -hmm. and then the shot breaking, right? So it's, you fired that arrow within one second of your point coming on. We can time it on there. It's right. definitely within that second. That's the critical second. Okay. When you have aimed, it's not time to shoot. It's time to decide, right? So when you finally get to that aim that you want, it's not shoot, it's get to the aim that you want. You're gonna have a little storm in that aim, right? right? Especially if you're shooting triggerless because your mind wants to let it go as soon as it sees that. So get the point where you want it instantly, right? Draw back and get the point where you want it. And then it's, here I go. And then you start talking yourself through that movement so that you can concentrate, right? You got to let the storm pass because there's going to be a storm in your aim. It happens during that critical second. That's the time when you got to snatch it away from autopilot. You snatch it away from autopilot by saying, here I go, 
that'll put you in the present for that final job, okay? See the difference in that, felt, right? Yeah, felt totally You different. see how that feels completely different, right? Yeah. When you get on there, your mind is like, ah, right? It's on, shoot it. Right. Right? It's I not. I felt it a lot more in right. there, and I still, like, it was shoot it, and then it calmed down, and then it did it again. Right. It so that's, so you, you got to let the storm yeah. pass. Right. You being aimed means nothing. Right. It's just something that you get done, right? right? Draw back and aim, get it done, and then watch it to keep it. It's always coming back to the center of the sight picture that you have chosen, right. okay? Get it done, watch to keep it, here I go, and then you all concentration on the movement that either makes your bow fire if you're not shooting a trigger, or the movement that gets you to your trigger, one of the two, okay. right? However you choose to shoot it. Cool. You had mentioned something here, just a, a term, just a, a minute ago. A mechanical, mechanic, what did you say? <laughs> mechanoreceptive trigger. That's it. Right, so what is that? mechanoreceptors are just sensory receptors in your skin cells. And they pick up stimulus and they, they give the brain that signal and then the brain sends out the proper motor program for that. Like if you or I were sitting here just BSing and I put my hand down on a hot stove, not knowing it was a hot stove, the mechanoreceptors in the skin cells of my fingers would say, hey stupid, that's hot. Right? It sends that, it's hot signal to my brain. My brain then sends the motor program to get my hand off the stove, right? So a mechanoreceptive trigger in archery would be something like a clicker, like your grip sear, uh, my internal trigger, tab sears, feather to nose, there's all kinds of them. There's one that's been used for hundreds of years, if not thousands, where the point of the arrow is bigger than the shaft and people would draw it back to where the point touches their knuckle. Right? So this is something that uh, Saxon Pope writes about in his yeah. book, Hunting with a Bow and Arrow. Yeah. Draw the bow until the barb of the arrow touches mm -hmm. his knuckle. And that's from ancient Chinese archery text. The arrow is not ready to be loosed until the point touches the knuckle. People, people talk about this as, as like it's some newfangled thing. Right. but it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's simply we now know the science of it, right? It's using yes. mechanoreceptors. So when that, when the point of that arrow, let's say Saxon Pope or Saxon or Pope's using this thing, right, and it comes back, it touches the mechanoreceptors, pick up that signal, sends that signal to the brain. The brain then sends the release motor program. Why can't we just draw back, aim, get our aim right, and let go? Why do we need that separation there? In a in a triggerless shot, if we're not using any type of trigger then the subconscious is allowed to tell itself when to release. And we know what happens when it's, it's always going to try to anticipate that, right? So if you are shooting triggerless, and that's totally cool, if you can shoot triggerless with control, then by all means, please do it, right? It's a very accurate way of shooting, but the crux of it is you have to separate from the aim. Otherwise, you're going to go down that path of target panic. That's not my opinion. That's just how it works, right? With a mechanoreceptive trigger, it gives that, that second job, that concentration on a movement, it gives that movement a goal, right? Like you pressing through your grips here, your whole world is the increase in pressure on that fingernail, right? So you just increase the pressure on that. You don't know when it's gonna pop, you don't care when it pops. But when it does pop, it sends that signal faster than the subconscious can get in the way. So the subconscious is completely eliminated, therefore there's no pre-ignition movement. So that's how, that's how you don't mess things up. Right. You set your shot up, you utilize that mechano, whatever you said. Mechano-receptive trigger, yeah. Mechano-receptive trigger. Yep. That is your cue to let go and that, the shot's gone before you have an opportunity to mess it up. Yep. As you're, long as you've done your job and you've set it up. You're only doing, at that point in your shot, your only job is to concentrate on the movement. It's your only job. You've already set everything else up. You've got your bow arm set, you're in alignment, you've already aimed at the target. Once you separate from that aim, here I go, and that starts the motor running as far as concentration on the movement. And that movement's gotta be slow enough you can stop it. Right? We could talk about the science of open and closed loop control systems and all that stuff that's in my online course, but it's, there's science behind all of this stuff. It's not my opinion, it's just how our mind works. 
right? So any people that say, no, no, I don't, I don't do it that way, that's cool, but there is science out there, right? And if you don't follow it, then you're gonna follow the natural path of the human mind. If you can shoot really good that way, then by all means, please do it. But you don't have to struggle anymore. The minefield has been navigated. Yes, right? yes, I completely agree. All right, let's, uh, I wanna talk about one other thing and then we're gonna shoot some arrows. Okay. But you, you, you talk about you don't have to struggle. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think a lot of people um, are presented with very good information or good advice mm -hmm. at a point in their life or wherever they happen to be where they're just not ready to accept that. Mm -hmm. And that was me in Florida. <laughs> six years ago right. or whatever, whatever. Yeah. So Joel, we're at the PBF, the Professional Bowhunter Society Banquet, and Joel runs me down, <laughs> will not leave me alone, talking about all of this stuff, target panic and mechano whatever receptors <laughs> yeah. and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah, right. I don't want to talk about sure. this. You know, and then at the time I was shooting okay. You know, I was I could shoot well enough to kill an elk at 20 yards and that was good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And it really, you know, I went on like that for several more years and it hasn't been but for the last probably two years, three years maybe, when I really started paying attention to what you had to say. Mm -hmm. And for the past year I have shot better than I have ever shot before. And it's not because of form, it's not because all of that stuff I've got. I, mm -hmm. I feel like I've got that good. Sure. It's not because of all of that stuff, it's because of exactly what you're talking about. It's because now I'm able to separate those two jobs. Mm -hmm. I can get my aim set, I can get my form all set up, everything is perfect. The problem that I always had was that shot anticipation mm -hmm. and introducing variability in the shot that didn't need to be there. Right. Now, I can separate that out and I right. don't have to put it in. And I'd watched you shoot a lot of arrows. I know that you're a very determined person, right? Like we shot at uh, Western States a couple years after the Florida thing, right? And your first shot, right? I was excited to shoot with you and your first shot was not good, right? <laughs> it wasn't good. And then you got pissed and you shot great for the rest of the day. And we had that, that discussion, I'm like, what's the difference, Yeah. right? And you said that you got pissed, right? And that's what it took to get your determination level up high enough for you to even step onto the path, yeah. right, of shot control. So, and now you, you see your determination. All, and that's what, that's a big deciding factor for people. Like you have to look to some point in your life when failure was not an option, right? And it's, it's easy for me as a police marksman or whatever, you know, to, to have that determination. Because if I miss, very bad things are going to happen, right? So it's not an option for me to do that. So I have to be determined enough to do this every single time. And so people need to look back in their life and go, you know, maybe it was a shot that they missed or whatever, right? Use that, that feeling that you had of frustration and anger and all that and channel it into... I'm gonna shoot it this way, no matter what, right? And once you find that determination, you start to learn the decisions you need to make, when you need to make them in your shot, then things really start to come together as they have for you in your shot. So it's a whole different world, like just watching a shoot earlier today, whole different person yeah. than what was than years ago. Yep. So, well, let's uh, let's shoot some arrows. Okay, let's we're gonna see. It. We're gonna watch you shoot first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> when I shoot a shot, like you, I've got you standing here, I've got the camera on me, all these things are happening. So my original decision, I'm going to shoot this shot with control no matter what, has become a fundamental truth. It's a principle by which I live. I don't care if it's a monster bull elk in front of me, who's watching, I'm going to shoot a controlled arrow if that's what the environment needs, right? If it's a close moving shot, then obviously it's not, it's just an open loop shot, right? But if I got a stationary target, it's not going anywhere, right? So I'm gonna control myself in this shot. So I don't necessarily have to make the original decision because it's already there. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a principle by which I live. So I'll get my hook on my string. I get my grip right. I know kind of where I need to be pointing this arrow. And then when I draw back, I, my jobs are very separated. I'm gonna draw back 
and aim, you'll see that the, the aim happens very quickly with me. I don't, I'm not coming into the target from any direction. It's just boom, I get my aim done and then it's here I go, right? I always keep that decision in there, here I go, and then I start through my internal trigger, right? So my aim is already complete right now. Here I go. And I shoot that shot. So when I draw back, I get into very good, with my thumb, with my fingers, it's hard for me to get into good alignment just because of arm bone length and such. But when I shoot my thumb, I can get into really good alignment. And like you said, in your shot, you feel that kind of cam over. So I feel that come in and I've already aimed here I go, and then I start through my internal trigger, which is just nothing more than creating a bubble of air in my, between my tongue and the roof of my mouth. And then I simply start pushing that toward the roof of my mouth. When that bubble breaks, that's my mechanoreceptive trigger to let it go. So, so that's your separation? Yeah. So the separation comes from the decision. The mechanoreceptive trigger that I'm using is internal, so there's no devices or anything like that. It's just internal. So we're going to do a, we're probably going to do another video on this whole setup that you've got going on here because this is something that's very unique and quite strange actually. <laughs> <laughs> but people are going to yeah, people are going to look ask. at this and say, what in the world is right. going on here? Right. So, so we'll we'll cover that in another video. Okay. Let's shoot one more. Two fine arrows. Yeah, just like that. Too easy. I form a, a pocket of air above my tongue and between my tongue and the roof of my mouth. And then I simply increase the pressure on that pocket of air and that pocket of air is eventually escapes. And it escapes out the back of my throat and it's like a buzzer going off in my head, right? I don't care when it pops, I don't care if it pops. I just keep that pressure going. All concentration is on the movement that gets me through my trigger, right? So. That's what I use now, so it's really cool. There's no devices. I can pick up anybody's bow and use the same trigger. It's really cool stuff. Well, that's brilliant. Uh, the, so I've gone through, I've used, anybody that's watched my shooting videos has seen me shoot with a clicker on my bow, to which I get no end of grief oh, sure. from, from trad, tra trad guys, yeah. uh, especially self bow guys. Yep. Um, what I am using now is just a little tack that I've got here in my grip, and I just, uh, again, like Joel was talking about, just hook my fingernail on that and I actually relax my hand and when that pops off, you can hear that. It's mostly just a feel thing right. for me. Yep. But the important part about all of these things is that it is a surprise. You yep. don't know when it's going to go off and so you can't anticipate it. Right. And if you can't anticipate it, you can't mess it up. Right. It just completely eliminates all pre-ignition movements. But if people will find themselves on the on a sear system they'll start into the pressure and then they punch it well that's now they're, they're firing on the punch you've decided is, when to, right, to, to make it go movement. so yeah. determination make your decisions be in the present and concentrate just keep increasing the pressure on that thing whatever your movement is slow enough you can stop it anywhere within it right it is your only job at that point in your shot is to move through that trigger slow enough you can stop it. All right, I'm gonna see if and I can do that. Let's not see if you can do it, right? That's not a I'm gonna do it. It's not a determined statement. And a lot of people, this is a very important point because a lot of people will will go, okay, all right, I'm gonna try this and see see how it works. There's nothing that will work for you. You have to work for it, but you gotta know how to do the work. And yeah. that's what shot IQ is about is how do you actually do the work? So when you step up on the line, it's not I'm gonna see if see if we can do this. It's I'm gonna shoot this shot with control no matter what, right? Those three words, no matter what, they're on my shirts because it's always said in a very determined statement. Have you ever heard anybody put those three words together, no matter what, in an undetermined statement? Those words are the epitome of determination, so let's use them in our shot, right? Sounds good to Here me. Here we go.
a little bit high, but it felt good. Yeah, it was good. So it, you'll notice in Clay's shot, there was pauses, right? There's pauses and that's, those pauses are being filled by decisions and that's why you were able to control your shot. And you'll see the people that don't have those pauses in their shot, they're not making any decisions. Therefore, there's no way they can step onto that path that you just stepped on in that shot. I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad that I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Because I feel, I mean, I have more confidence now in my shooting than I ever have. And I shot, I mean, I've been shooting stick bows for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it's not been but the last two or three that I've really, really the last year that I've uh -huh. really just yeah. dialed it in. It's, it's in large part because of what you teach. Right. So why don't you just tell people, and I'm, guys, I have no financial motive to pitch Joel's stuff. <laughs> I'm just telling you from firsthand experience that what this guy talks about, I know it helped me and I know it can help a lot of other folks. So where can folks find yeah, your courses the, and things that? The website is shotiq.com and on there I've got an online course and it runs through the entire science of all this stuff, right? I mean, you learn the science of aiming. What does it really mean to aim? Visual proprioception, and what does it really take? Does it take concentration or does it not, right? You finally learn how to actually concentrate. You learn the entire science of the mind and then you learn how to apply it. Not only in stick bows but also in compound archery as well. There's two completely different tracks. They're the same science just utilized with a different system, right? So it's really cool stuff and then I, I teach courses all over the world really. So we travel all over the place doing this stuff. So it's, uh, it's and again, it's not my opinion. I, I when I was, fully engulfed in target panic, I was looking for the, I was looking for the answer, right? Everybody's always looking for the answer and it's, it only exists in science, right? It's not this, everything that I teach is not my opinion. I went out and did the research because I was sick of missing and it's really powerful stuff. When you find, I mean, you're, you're experiencing it now, right? When you have control of your shot, it changes how you see things, right? You you now look at critters as not only just an, an animal that you're trying to harvest, but a concentration test, right? It's no longer where you're like, you actually feel relief when you don't get that shot, right? I mean, I, I've experienced that a lot. I'm sure you probably have too. You're like, oh, I'm almost gonna get the shot. And like, oh, I didn't, whew, man, <laughs> right? And you're almost relieved that you don't get the shot. Well, that doesn't happen anymore because you, you yeah. approach the shot completely differently, right? You're looking yeah. forward to it. You know exactly how you're going to do it. And that's where the power comes from. You know, people spend a lot of money on these hunts and stuff, and they don't know how they're going to control their shot. They don't really know how it's going to go. Yeah. I know how I'm going to shoot my shot. You know how you're going to shoot your shot. They're hoping. Yeah. Hope is not a plan, right? Hope has, so, hope has zero power. Yeah. So Except for disappointment. <laughs> yeah, right. It's really cool stuff to learn this shot control. It is. Yeah. So shotiq.com. Yes, sir. Yep. There you go. Thanks, Clay. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed spending the time with Joel and making it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. You can click this little circle over here. That'll subscribe you, and then you can turn on notifications so that you get a little icon when I upload a new video. With that, get out there, shoot your bows, have fun. And we'll see you next time.